Yo, what's up guys, it's your boy Anizi with what if Naruto was isekai to DXD. So let's get started. Naruto was tied down. Looking above him was the fake Madra, also known as Obito Uchiha, who was on top of him, on top of the Gardomazo or the Jubi husk. It's been a long time, but finally my dream will come to fruition. I shall fix this world and bring peace when I become the Jinchoki of the Ten Tails after extracting the Nine Tails from you, Obito says as he started extracting Kurama from Naruto. Ah, oh, I'm done for. You know Kurama, we might have re just recently became friends, but I want to say out of everybody in this world, you're my greatest friend and the only person I trust. I mean, you kept me alive during this fox hunt. You gave me power when I needed it the most, Naruto says. Kit. You're also my friend and the only human I fully trust. There was oh, once another human that I fully trust but he was only half. His name was Hagoromo Otosuki, the Sage of Six Paths, your ancestor. I see that only you inherited his goodwill, Krama said as Naruto started to scream as Krama felt the jury trying to pull him out of Naruto. Don't, don't you die on me, Kit. We can do this. Remember. When we're together, there's nothing that can overpower us. There's nothing that can overcome us. Remember, we beat all the other tailed beasts together. We could do it, Krama yelled. As Naruto felt his chakra pulling Krama back in, trying to keep Krama from going into the Juby husk. Chakra tug of war again? You promised we wouldn't do that, Naruto says, joking. Idiot, don't joke around. Right now, hurry up and stop me from going in, and then we'll beat that bastard of Uchiha, Krama said. Yeah, I won't let Sasuke's evil clan win. The Uchiha's are evil and must be stopped. They killed my parents. And not to forget they're trying to start war. Seriously, Itachi should have killed all the Uchiha's. Tobirama should have done it as soon as he got the idea, Naruto said. As Krama agreed. As both Naruto and Krama let out a roar. As Krama pulled the tailed beast into himself. Naruto's chakra reserve started to skyrocket. As the Jubi husk disappeared and sealed itself into Naruto and the CEO started to fix itself. A giant explosion happened, destroying, or what looked like destroying Naruto. When Naruto woke up, all he saw was darkness. I, I died. Me and Krama died, Naruto thought. That is right, young Uzumaki. You have died, which is why you are here. You see, you were not meant to die there, but due to a mistake of my own, you have died. Your partner wasn't meant to become the Tentos. Kaguya was meant to be released which would make you and Sasuke work together to save the world. In the end, Sasuke betrays you again, trying to start a revolution, but you beat him to submission. And then you go on and live a happy life. Well, what could be considered happy? I mean, you did hang, uh, you did end up with that Hugo girl. But you died early, so I'm going to give you another chance. Both you and Kurama, who is now the new Ten Tails, will have a second chance, if you want, said the voice. Who are you? And... What is my second option? My second chance option? Naruto asked. This being that appeared in front of him made him feel fear. He doesn't know why, but his body naturally submitted to him. His soul was scared of him. He knew that the being would hurt him without even trying to, if he made so much as it even a little bit angry. Even without his ability to sense emotions, he would have known not to challenge this deity. This world is divided that I'm going to send you to. There are multiple factions. These factions are equivalent to shinobi villages in your world. The main three are the devils, the angels and the fallen angels. They are like the five great nations. They are at war with each other. This world's child of prophecy is nothing but a filthy pervert who doesn't take his destiny seriously. So I need you to save the world and work with him to save this world. Uh, uh, I, why me? Naruto asked. Because, Naruto, you defied your fate. Your destiny, as Neji would say it, was not fulfilled. You saved your world with less casualty than what would have happened if things went my path. That alone makes you worthy. You didn't deserve to live a life of being the least weapon like the third Okage intended by de depriving you of positivity and happiness and spre spreading your status as the Jinchoki and then making you dream of being the Hokage. So you can win the Fidge's respect and ha be happy. A pure, incorruptible man like yourself should not have su uh, 
suffered such a life. I need to correct my mistake. What I need is someone to save this world from itself. This world is corrupted and only someone incorruptible like you can save it, said the voice. Now I thought about this, about a second chance, a life without being judged. He knew he would never be Hokage, how the villagers faked liking him. His emotion sensing showed him that. Even Hinata was playing with his emotions. His emotion sensing told him that she did not actually like him. And when he went around in a henge, he actually henged as Kiba. And he found out that both Hinata and him were actually in a relationship before the pain attack. And they, they told him that Hinata was going to marry Naruto only to have his children and then kill him off when he got too strong. Which is why Sonali ordered the village to fake like him so he could be loyal until he was no longer needed. He needed this chance. A chance at a second life, away from all the hatred, away from being considered a weapon or beating stock, away from the leaf village, away from the elemental nations. Even now as he rested in limbo, he can hear the snow beats celebrating, not that they've won, but the death of the demon kid and all of the bijus and the last Jinjuriki. They were saying how they will burn his corpse alive. Why, Naruto thought. They wouldn't even change. Why did he ever think that he would be able to win their trust? What's happening? Why am I thinking like this? Naruto thought out loud. You were never really loyal to this village, young Uzumaki. You had a loyalty seal and constantly had more seals, seals placed on you, which shaped your personality to something the leaf wanted it to be, so that you never think of acting against the leaf or its people. Now that you're dying, you're no longer restrained by those seals, the uh, voice answered. What? My host? My kit had seals on him? How dare those monsters? They have the guts to call me a demon? And my siblings are demons? And what? They just get a tap on the shoulder? Don't do it again. Since Naruto's dead, we can't punish them. Krama yelled at the voice. Krama, is that you? Naruto asked, tearing up at the sight of his only friend. Yes, kit, it is I. And I've got an upgrade, as you can see. Krama says, egotistically flexing his tenth tail, while his eyes soft softened uh, when seeing his kit. His child, he doesn't give a shit if Minato and Krishna gave birth to Naruto. They knowingly abandoned poor little Naruto to such a fate knowing it would be worse than death, knowing that they would die and they wouldn't have to put up with the hate. They will be punished. As we speak, all of the chakra in this world is being drained from all of the shinobi and all of the natural energy is also being drained and he's going into Naruto's natural reserves. His power already matches your old nine tails reserves. They will have to learn to live without chakra. This is their punishment to suffer without having chakra, to have to start life once again. They won't have their advancements in medical because those are based on chakra. They won't have their, they won't have anything. They won't be able to do anything. Anyways, Naruto, do you accept this new chance at life? The voice said. Just making sure my only friend from that world, Krama, will come with me. Right? Naruto asked with hope. Yes. The voice said, his eyes softening a bit. Well then, it's not nice for me to make such a decision on my own that will affect both of us. So Krama, what do you say? Wanna go and have another life? Another chance at life? Said Naruto. It will be my pleasure, Kit, to accompany you on your new adventure, to see what you become without being held back, Krama said, smiling. We accept, Mr. Buis, Naruto says. As the voice just grumbled about Naruto calling him God, not Mr. Buis. Now that that's done, I will explain a few things, a few abilities that you will have. First, being the Jubi Jinchuriki, you will have access to a Rinnegan, but not just any Rinnegan, the Rinnegan gun. Secondly, you will have scaly, you would have had scaly skins, but I removed that so you could look normal and fit in. Your eyes will also be upgraded so you can have the abilities of every Sharingan and Bakugan, meaning you can see through walls, copy any attack that you see. The Sharingan has been upgraded so that it's not just chakra based attack ninjutsu you can see but you can also copy taijutsu, genjutsu and even keke genkans. I've also given you knowledge of everything that the elemental nations know including every single technique created and finally I've given you every chakra based bloodline said the voice. One last thing before you go. I want you to meet your two new partners said 
the voice as blue and green flames erupted and surrounded the area as next to Krama in the cage was two smaller dragons that reminded Naruto of half Krama size. This was Dragon Albion, the voice said. Hello there partner, I'm Drake, the great red dragon emperor, said Drake as he explained everything about himself. Greetings partner, I'm Albion, the white dragon emperor, and we have been debriefed on the situation and I must say you're certainly better than the last host we had, said Albion as he remembered Vali while Drake remembered Issei, who they both left their body to join Naruto. Hey, I'm Naruto. Naruto introduced himself explaining his life to the dragons as the dragons got angry at the thought of their partner being used in such a way. Hello, I'm N Krama, the former Ninetales turned Tentails. Krama says that he explained everything about himself, his siblings and the Tentails. Krama, you also have every single ability that your siblings has, the being said as Naruto then blacked out. Naruto woke on a comfortable bed. As he looked around, he saw a beautiful silver-haired woman in a maid outfit who was blushing. Um, who are you and where am I? Naruto asked. You're awake. You're awake. I'm Grafia, Luffyage, Queen of Sazex Lucifer. You're currently in the Gremlin Mansion in the Underworld, said Grafia. The afterlife? Naruto asked, confused. Wasn't he supposed to be alive in a new world? No, it's the home for devils. You're not dead, Grafia said. As Naruto nodded, as information about the DXD world filled his head from both Drake and Albion. Please follow me to the dining room so you can eat. I can see that you're hungry, Gravia said as she left no room for argument as Naruto nodded. Did I get taller? Naruto asked Krama in his head. I think so, Kit. Everything about you has gotten larger, especially your chakra network. It was as big as the Ninetales when I was the Ninetales, said Krama. Do you have ramen? Naruto asked. That's not normally served over here, but I guess we can make an exception. May I ask your name? Griffia said. Being polite, this man could destroy the entire underworld to pieces if he wanted to. And if what Akuja theorized about him surviving the dimensional gap is true, he's a force to be reckoned with. I am Naruto Uzumaki, Naruto said in his cheerful childish tone. What race are you? Griffia asked. Um, last I remember, I'm human, but it might have changed due to circumstances, but I don't really remember. My memory's kind of on and off, Naruto half lied. He remembers, but he didn't want to alert or pick a fight with anyone yet. Where are you from? I'm from the Elemental Nations. Well, that's a different world, Naruto said. You have arrived, Griffia said, showing a huge luxurious kitchen. Can you make the boy some ramen, Griffia said, as the chef nodded. Yes, ma'am, said. The chef, as he left, two figures came up. Grafia seeing them straightened up as she kneeled. May I introduce you to two of the four leaders of the devil faction, said Zex Lucifer and Akuja Beelzebub, said Grafia. The red-haired one seems to be stronger than Kit. We're not stronger than us. He's stronger out of the two. But then again, he's barely Kage level, while the others are low Sanin level. But don't be like Uchiha, don't become arrogant. It's your only redeeming personality of not being arrogant but humble, Karma said. Hmm, but the fox is right. So Zex Lucifer is actually a really powerful opponent, Drake said. I can vouch for that, Albion said. You really think I'll be like Sasuke? Naruto said with disgust in his mind. A being compared to Trash, a man who abandoned his team for revenge, a man who was so obsessed in power that he would have started a revolution if what? The being said was true, which it was. Hi, I'm Naruto Uzumaki. Thanks for letting me stay here, Naruto says, his eyes zooming in on the red hair. It seems that Naruto inherited his like for red hair from his father. Ah, oh, sir, your ramen is ready, the chef said as he laid out the food. Oh, thanks. Um, Can I get some seconds if it's not too much to ask? Naruto said, with the baby fox look making Grafia facial expression change for just a second as Grafia then asked to make some more. Yes sir, yes ma'am we shall make some more, said the chef. So anyways, I presume you want to know how I got here, Naruto says as Sazex nodded. Naruto explained everything about his life, apart from meeting the voice. Oh, and I also uh, have the two dragon emperors inside me, as well as Krama, said Naruto. I see, so that's what happened to young Issei, when the red dragon left him. Of course, Rias and the others do not know this, they just think he has a tricycle. 
Do you know why that happened? Asked Azex. When he asked that the white dragon wings formed on Nata's back, while the red dragon emperor formed on Nata's hand. Shocking, says X. You have both dragons? Says X said. This boy is definitely the most powerful dragon emperor out there, said Akuja, wheels above. Sir Zex Lucifer, the reason I left Issei is because he is unworthy of wielding my power. Unlike Naruto, who, as you know, has saved his entire world, said Drake. Not wanting Naruto to have to explain everything about the voice, because that needed to be kept a secret. That was on a need to know basis only. There is also higher stakes in this. Me and Drake have decided to put aside our differences and get a new powerful host, so I also left to Bali, said Albion. Well that is fine, Issei never really unlocked your power Drake so everyone in the peerage thinks he's just a trice critical nobody. Uh, but Albion, your, ones will, your host will probably have a problem. He'll probably try to target young Naruto, said Sussex. Let him come, said Albion. I'll show, we will show him the power of Naruto Uzumaki and the Dragon Emperors and the Fox Lord, said the Free. And it's also good because I would never go back to that pervert, Drake said with disgust. Well, is there anything else you'd like to know? Naruto says, no, says X was about to say, but was cut off. Actually, could I ask how you traveled through the dimensional gap? Said Alkuja Beelzebub. Tell him, it's the ability of the Rinnegan kid. Having the support of a faction would help you in your goals of restoring peace to this world, said Krama. My eyes allow me to manipulate space and time, Naruto says, switching to the, the Rinnegan and showing it off as Sir Zex felt the mere power. That's all. Thanks for answering our questions. You may now enjoy your ramen, Akuja says. Actually, before they go, could you demonstrate your abilities? Raphael asked, blushing a bit as she felt his power. Okay, Naruto says as he performs his signature jutsu, the shadow clone, making Raphael blush as she thought how useful that technique would be in bed and how this man's woman will definitely be satisfied. Is my little Graphia blushing, said a voice of a woman that was walking down. She looked like an older version of Graphia as she kissed Sir Zex on the lips. Eclair, my wife, how are you? asked Sir Zex. I'm good. So this is the new guest. He seems powerful. No wonder little Graphia has got a crush on him, said Eclair as Graphia started to mutter denials. Naruto, this is my wife Eclair Luffage, said Sir Zex. Nice to meet you, Naruto. Sir. Ah, the man who came from the dimensional gap. Such a strong name to go with it, said the a voice. When Naruto looked up, he saw an older version of Sezex. Is this his older brother, Naruto thought? He looks so powerful, said the brown-haired woman. Seeing Naruto's confusion, she smiled as he looked absolutely adorable. I'm Belina Gremory, and this is Zeokus Gremory, and we are the Gremory family heads. And I see you met our son, Sezex, and his wife, Ikle, said Belina. He's your son, but... You look like you're only in your twenties, Naruto shouted shocked, making Sazek's father chuckle. Ha 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 ha, you're quite the flatterer, but yes, we are his parents. We devils can live past 1000 years, Sazek's dad said. Oh, but isn't Sazek's name is Lucifer, said Naruto. That was a title granted to him when he became the strongest devil and the leader of the underworld. The heir title, or heiress in this case, goes to his sister, Rias. Oh, that rem reminds me, will you attend her marriage with Lord Riser? said Ikre. Um, okay, Naruto said, as he got a bad feeling for everybody when Riser was man mentioned. His emotions and sensibilities went off. I guess we have a mission. You've always wanted to save a princess from an evil by man, didn't you, Naruto? said Krama. A few hours later, Naruto was struggling while blushing Grafia was tying his tie as she could smell his scent and it was manly. I don't understand why why I can't go in my jumpsuit, Naruto whined, making Griffey a sigh. He was just like a king, strong but childish. How her sister deal, dealt with these types was still a mystery to her. We will be attending a wedding and Sir Zex has personally invited you. Sir Zex Summer must not be humiliated. You must look f formal and good, Griffey said. Okay, but can't I wear something more casual? Asked Naruto. No. Grafia said, making Naruto pout. Grafia was about to give in to the cute baby fox eyes, but stop. She was her lord's queen, and she must not fail him. She must not falter to this cute little fox child. Stepping away, Grafia had to admit. After Naruto was done 
putting on his clothes, he did look good. He didn't look very professional, but he made it work somehow. Are we done? Nato asked. Yes, Bifia said. As she showed him towards the mirror, after Nato checked himself out, they left to go to the wedding hall. Nato walked into the party gathering from many of the devils present. S someone they'd never seen before was being escorted by the strongest queen, so that caught the devil's attention, as that boy also seemed completely human. Nato began to feel nervous. Yeah, when he was younger, he wanted this kind of attention, but now he didn't want it, especially since he hadn't done something to deserve that attention. He was just trying to not stand out, just fit in. He quickly spotted Sazex, bright crimson hair, along with Zeokus, who were talking to a black-haired person. Nato and Grafia went to Sazex. Ah, let me introduce you to Nato Uzumaki, Sazex said as they approached him. He is the boy who appeared during the rating games. I heard that you could travel through dimensions. Did you have magical girls in your dimension too? The girls said, getting way too close to his face. This is her for Leviathan. Another one of the great Satans, Grafia said calmly. Um, no, we didn't, Nato said. Hey, wait, isn't he that guy? Said a beautiful girl. This was Akuna. You mean the guy who broke into our rating game? After our rating game? Into the arena? Azia asked. Yeah, that's him. Remember, he had those blonde hair and the blue eyes. And he's staying very close to Sazek Summer. He looks so nervous. I wonder how he would look under my foot, Arkner said sensually as a sadistic nature came out. He has chakra, Konika says. Chakra, Azia said. It's a type of energy that every living being has, including humans. But he's special. Normally humans only have just a tiny bit enough to survive. But he has more than the entire underworld has magic. His is very dense, more dense than hers, Konika said. Usually that only happens in yokai. He might be trained in using senjutsu, Akna said as Konika flinched. That makes him dangerous, Akna added on. He smells like many different beings. It's hard to tell, dragon, fox, human. I don't like it, he's scary, like her, Konika said. I on, the under, I on the other hand do like it. Just think how he could punish me if he's actually a dragon. He could be a better dragon than easy, Akna thought. Nato looked at the entrance as, ma as suddenly massive pillars of flame erupted. The chatter quieted down and the man stepped out of the pillar. Nato could already tell just by looking at him that he was a Sasuke wannabe. This man thought he was superior to everybody else. His aura basically screamed I'm better than you. I've always been surrounded by arrogant assholes. He reminds me of Sasuke Uchiha, Nato thought. True, Kurama said. I'd like to welcome you all to my wedding. The wedding of Rise of Phoenix. Not only is this day my wedding, but also the union between two powerful families. Let me present my bride, my queen, Rhea Scrammy. The arrogant piece of shit said. Isn't that Sazex's sister, Nato thought? As when he looked at the girl, he had to say that she was the most beautiful full person she's ever seen. He's ever seen. Her crimson red hair, he liked it so much. She looked really cute which was something Naruto was weak to. However, her face didn't reflect what should be reflected in the day. She should be happy, but she looked so sad, so defeated, as she walked out in silence, with no smiles, no bright eyes. Naruto was beginning to feel like this wedding wasn't right, as Naruto got mad when he realized. Butchu! President! A scream was heard as a brown-haired boy slammed open the door, as Naruto heard a groan f from Drake in his head. Not him. Anyone but him. I hope I wasn't going to meet him again, Drake said. As Kramer went like, that's your last horse, isn't it? As then Albion went like, pathetic, Drake. What would you be thinking, choosing him? As Nato chuckled at Albion and Dra Drake's rivalry. Well, Kramer was just like, offended. This was like, the person that his friend that he's come to become with, that he come to know, last host. He was so thankful that he wasn't born in this world because if he was in a host like that he would have probably started crying by now. I am Issei Hildo and I've come to save Rhea Scremi. Save her, what's going on? Naruto tried to think of what was going on as he remembered how the Gremi families looked when they talked about Ryza. Rhea says mine, Issei said, making Naruto get mad. 
this imbecile embarrasses her like that when she's already sad by claiming that she's an object that belongs to him. This perv really pissed him off. Seriously, Kramer, I think I'm cursed to be near perverts now to thought. True, Kramer said. Oh, just you wait. Soon you will suffer what I did, Drake said. It couldn't be that bad. Come on, Drake, Albion said. He was the worst, Drake said. What's going on? Who is he? Said the devils that were present that did not know Issei. Naruto was baffled. This boy was weak and arrogant. A Sasuke equivalent of the universe would wreck him. That was my ex-host, Drake sighed. Drake, you know if my ex-host fought your ex-host, it would have been a massacre. My host would have destroyed him. He's already a chief balance breaker and is the descendant of Lucifer. He was close to unlocking Jugnaut Drive before I left him. Your ex-host looks like he's on life support in terms of strength, Albion says. I know he was a weak disgrace. He didn't deserve to be a Red Dragon Emperor. Why do you think I cursed exi his existence, Drake said, as Naruto chuckled. He felt kind of bad dissing Issei, but still, Issei was meant to save the world, but he spent his time looking at porn from what Drake told him. Relax, I organized this, Suzek says, raising his hand as he stepped between Issei and Ryza. What do you mean, Lucifer Summer? Ryza said, his eyebrows twitching. Rias clearly doesn't want to marry you, Ryza, Issei shouted, pointing his hand towards the duo. Let her go, Issei said childishly. I won the rating game. I won Rias. Those were the conditions, Ryza said, as not his eyes widened. He, as he processed the information, Rias was not just some prize to be won. She was a human being or a devoured being, a living person, a living thing, a living being. Just as quickly his eyes hardened. And he began to walk up to the free. Naruto, let's show those Uchiha ripoffs. What happens when you to all arrogant beings? Kramer yells. I'm sorry, what did you say? You wanna? Naruto shouted, stepping forward, glaring at Ryza. Who are you? You're, wait, you're that thing, aren't you? You're not even from this dimension. Ryza yelled. Answer the damn question, you mongo. You wanna? Did you even give her a choice? Naruto asked. Why does it matter? What did you call me? A mongo? You lowly being. I'm a phoenix noble nobleman. You're just a lowly human, Ryza said. D do you want to marry him? Not to ask softly, looking at Rias, even though his voice resonated power through the entire room. No, Rias screamed with desperation in her voice as Not looked at Ryza with pure rage in his eyes. How dare you? How dare you force her, Not yells. This marriage was signed by Lucifer himself, Ryza said, as Sussex felt a little bit of fear and gulped. Did Ryza really have to bait him out? You know nothing about this world's politics. You can't do anything, you freak. You shouldn't even have chakra. You shouldn't have power. You're just a human, a weak, useless nobody. Ryza taunts. Sussex, did you know your sister didn't want this, Sussex says. Sussex gulped as Naruto said that. Well, I signed it before she ha had been born. Sussex said as I asked did you know that she didn't want this Naruto said his voice turning demonic and deadly yes but I had to the pure blood devils were dying out it was the only way to preserve our race Sussex flinched at the glare Naruto gave him as when he said that so this is the kind of shitty world this place is huh why didn't you just go into CRA instead you want to put your sister through this kind of misery Naruto yelled out gritting his teeth can this marriage be overturned, Naruto whispered. Not technically, but if you work with me, we can somehow do this, Sussex whispered back in fear. At least you're trying to do something right, not right now, because if you didn't, I would probably have to sh show this world my rage, Naruto said. Hey wait, I remember you, but this is meant to be my moment. I meant to play the prince that saved her, Issei yelled as Rhea just slapped her face with a face palm. What do you mean, playing hero? Naruto asked, his voice turning deadly. I came here to fight with her. Then she will drain my harem once I save her. Issei says, if I remember correctly, first of all, she's not just an object to join your harem or whatever you call it. And secondly, in the rating games, you lost to Ryza with ease. Ryza just one slapped you out. You didn't even beat his pawn. Naruto yelled as Issei eyes widened. And then he nodded. Didn't you lose to him then? Naruto asked. As Issei nodded. 
Then how the fuck do you expect to beat him now? Naruto asked. Um, um, Issa said trying to answer the question. I can't, Issa said. Then I'll take care of this. Relax, relax. You can't do this right now, Naruto said. Riser, you think you're strong. I challenge you to a fight. If I win, you release Rias from this marriage contract. Unless of course you're afraid of a human, Naruto said. Using what he normally used against Sasuke, which was to mock his pride, to bait him into a fight. You impotent scum. You think Ryza is afraid. Let me show you how serious Ryza is. That he is the greatest raking in player and he can beat a pathetic human like you. Since you are so confident, how about we bet? I will bet my queen Yubaluna and you will bet yourself. If I win, you become the Phoenix Clan slave and my slave. And if you win, you get my queen and a set of evil pieces which the Phoenix Clan will pay for, Ryza said. I'll do it, Naruto said with determination, making Rhea stare at him. Why was he going so far for her? She didn't even know him. He didn't even demand for her marriage or anything like that. He demanded for her to be free. Rhea blushed as she found somebody, someone who won't see her as a trophy wife, a prize like Ryza or Issei did. She felt hatred at Issei as the boy claimed that she was his in front of everybody when he shouted, that she was Issei's. Let's get the show on the road, Naruto said. This is all acceptable, Suzek says. Fine, Ryza says, as his peerage appeared 15 beautiful gold. This man really was a scum. He was explaining what the peerage system was, and this man, rather than trying to become strong and build a respectable team, just wanted sex. Start, Suzek says, as the two were teleported to the stage, the same stage that the Rias' Priyaj fought in before, Crew Academy. <laughs> we'll end this, go and kill him, my Priyaj, Riza says as the girls rushed towards Naruto. Naruto dodged over the strikes until every girl was in line of his vision. As the, ev all of the devils were shocked at Naruto's speed and power, a human possessing this kind of speed and power. Naruto popped his hand. Shinra Tensei, Naruto said. S yeah, as all of the girls went flying back crashing into buildings. As they were all eliminated. Ryza's entire peerage eliminated, Grafia said, as everybody was shocked. Impossible, Arkner said. It took us hours to just even put one of them out, and he just knocks them out with a single attack. By just raising his hand, Kiba said. He used chakra, Koniko said, scared. He, he can win this. He can free me. He's like those super cool last minute anime heroes that save the day, Ria says, as then. When she heard and saw everybody looking at her, she started blushing. Ada, Ada, it seems he's not just cute, but strong as well. Arknos wants, Akna wants, Arknos says as Rias glared at her, which Arknos returned. Isha was crying in jealousy. His jealousy was rising. I'm stronger and better than him, Isha blurted out. You're really not. The only thing you beat him in is probably being pervert, Kanaka says, making Isha fall down. The rest of the peerage, the rest of the de devils were shocked. Ryza's peerage wasn't anything to scoff at. I mean, there was a reason why he won most of his rating games and only lost two that he threw away. Ryza was shaking fear. No, this isn't fair. This isn't how it, it was meant to go. You're a human. You're meant to be a weak trash. Ryza yelled as Naruto walked up to him, his dragon wings and gauntlet materializing, as ten tails formed on behind him. Ryza, look at the being you oppose, the host of the of both Dragon Empress Albion and Drake, and the Jinchuriki of the strongest Biju, crowned with the Ten Tails. Naruto says, as Naruto went Ten Tails Avatar mode, every devil was shaking in fear. Sazek Sama, is this real? He's on a whole different level. It's like Ulfus and Great Red combined, Greyfear said, scared but also blushing. He's interesting, Sazek thought, scared. Ada, Ada, such powerful Akno. He's amazing, he's like those anime heroes, Rias said gushing out, not even scared at all. Damn you, Issei said, as somehow he thought he was entitled to the red dra dragon gauntlet's power, not knowing that he was meant to have that, but he was deemed unworthy. Just what is this, human, was what the other relevant devils were saying. Tail beast bomb, Naruto says, as giant ball of purple energies smashed into Ryza, blowing him to smithereens. Ryza then started to regenerate slowly as Naruto purposely held back so he could make Ryza suffer. 
Is that all the great Phoenix can do? I thought you were so confident that you bet your queen against me. Just give up, Naruto says, making Ryusu Pirage laugh. Never. Riser is Riser Phoenix. Riser always gets what Riser wants. Even if Riser loses, the elders will give Ryusu to Riser. Riser says, Naruto, I think we should stop messing around and show these devils what will happen if you mess with us. These elders need to learn their place, Krama says as Naruto agreed. In that case, I guess I'll just have to show your elders their places in the world. In this world, I might not be like Madra, but I'm borrowing this from him. Tenge Shinsei, Naruto says, making a cisno form around him. Every devil watched in anticipation for a few seconds, making everybody. But after a few seconds, nothing happened, making everybody think it was a bluff. Before a huge shadow covered the arena, Riser's eyes widened making the devils think that if the great devil Riser was scared, what was going on? Riser then stared up in horror. As Akuja zoomed out of the battlefield, every devil had their mouth open. The elders were scared and scratched any plans of opposing Naruto. Is he a god? Naruto heard Issei say as the meteorite fell on top of... As the meteorite was falling, as it had the same purple aura Naruto used, as it kept falling down. I saw... Before Riser could finish, the meteor hit him as it destroyed the entire arena. As Riser screamed in pain and agony before his teleport to a med medical facility, Naruto was surrounded in his karma mood, unaffected by the meteor as he appeared back in the hall. Naruto was knocked to the floor by a red blur. Thank you, thank you, he said with tears in her eyes, as Naruto's eyes widened when she unexpectedly kissed him. Thank you, my hero, she said before she passed out from crying tears of joy. Ah, Naruto, I guess you're my new brother-in-law now, Sazek said. Well, I thought I made it so Rias can choose, Naruto yelled. Well, yes, you did, but until she does pick anybody other than you, you are her fiancé, and I know my sister would pick you. I mean, we all saw what just happened, Sazek said teasingly. It was just a kiss, Naruto blurted out, blushing. Well, anyways, we need to speak here, Sazek says, handing him a king piece and a, pi and a pirage piece. What's this? Naruto says. This is a special piece that won't turn you to a devil but allow you to have a pirage. Since Riser betted the queen and he paid for this to be made customly, we made it so that when you win you can claim Yubeluna as your queen as well as have a pirage. Kuja says as he explains the pieces as the king piece disappeared into Naruto. Hello my king, Yubeluna says, kneeling before her new king. Um, hi, Naruto says. Is there anything I could do for you, Master? Yubeluna says. No, nothing yet. Just go and get some rest. You've had a long fight, Naruto says awkwardly. Naruto was overwhelmed. He had woken up with Yubeluna and Rhea sleeping on him, naked. He could have sworn that they were both in the separate rooms last night. When he asked them why, Yubeluna said that a queen must sleep with a king on the same bed, while Rhea said that a wife must sleep with her husband. This confused Naruto. He had freed her, not tied her down to himself. But it didn't matter to him. He felt love for once. These girls made him feel love more, lo more loved in one day than he did his entire life in the Leaf Village. Or the Elemental Nations. He liked it. So after he and the girls had gotten up, he was introduced to so many different people in the castle of Sussex. He was being introduced to Rias' Parage, or he was going to, and well, when he saw them, he liked them at first glance. Well, most of them. He didn't hate Issei per se, but the boy radiated so much hatred towards him. It was impossible to like him for some reason. Could he be a leaf spy who accidentally traveled to this world? I wonder what I did, Naruto thought, oblivious to Issei's jealousy due to his childhood. He hadn't had experience in love or other people being jealous of him. Probably jealous because I showed him up in the rating game and my performance was better than him. He's probably jealous of my strength, just like Sasuke. He should fix up or else he will end up like the emo pick. Not foot. And this is my beloved family, my Piraj, Rhea stated. This is my queen, Akno Haimjama, Rhea said. As Nart looked at the black haired violet eyed beauty. She looks nice, Not a foot. Ha 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 ha, kit. Looks like you have another girl to add to your home, Krama said. That's my host, look at the size of those things, Drake said. Ass is better, but. Look at those knockers, Albion said, making Naruto start to blush. Why were the two 
then went to argue on what's better, also tits. Ara ara, now to kun, a nice and strong man like you, will you take me as your mistress when you marry president? Agnes said, making Naruto blush and turn redder. When Agnes said that, Naruto sensed the boy Issei, whose power was prophetic jealous and also radiating lots of hatred towards him. Is he jealous that Akno chan likes me? Well, he shouldn't be because, well, I'm sorry to say this, but no girl would ever like him. I mean, look at his hair. He looks like he has a bad hair day every day. It's nice to meet you, Akno chan Naruto says, as Agnes smiles and reads, <laughs> it looks like your future wife is jealous, Karma said. Ha <laughs> that's my partner getting a harem, said Drake. Agreed, you'll probably have the biggest harem in this world, having both Harmony Drabbles and the Primordial God inside of you while also being a descendant of a powerful goddess. You'll be pr practically wanted by every woman, Albion said. Now now, no teasing Arkno, Rhea says, with a slight glare making Arkno pout. You can't keep him for yourself, President, Arkno whines, making Rhea sighs. She, she's right, Rhea's thought. Just by sensing his power, I can infer that I wouldn't be able to handle him myself. In fact, not even five girls would be able to handle him. His stamina exceeds the whole world combined. Maybe the dragon gods can keep up with him, but I'm not sure about that. Grrr. Moving gun. This is my knight, Kiba. Rias growled. Nice to meet you, Naruto san, Kiba said. You too, Kiba. You seem strong, said Naruto. This Kiba was far better than Izuka trash from his village. So, what's your surname? Oh, it's Yuto, Kiba Yuto. And can you tell me how you became so fast, Naruto san, Kiba said. Well, my speed. I trained my base form so I can move faster than light without chakra. But with chakra, well, let's just say you won't see it coming. Speed also runs in the family. My father, the full full Kage, was the fastest man before me. He took out a b battalion of 1000 shinobi in just a single flash, Naruto said, proud of his father's accomplishments. Kiba nodded in respect. He would work on increasing his base speed so when using magic, he'll be faster. He used Senjutsu, Naruto heard from below. When he looked down, he saw a white head go. Yeah, is that a problem now to ask? Senjutsu is dangerous. It made her go crazy, the girl said. Really? I don't really see anything wrong with the nature energy of this world, Naruto said. Wow, Naruto, that's amazing. You might be special since n nature energy contains all the hatred of the nature in it and it corrupts people because of how humans treat the earth. Mother Nature's angry, Rhea said. Oh yeah, and by the way, this is my rook, Konoku, Rhea said. Wait. You're talking about a tiny amount of hatred? That's nothing. From where I come from, it's kill or be killed. I feel more hatred from Shinobi than I did from the Earth, Naruto said. Nature hated Shinobi. It didn't just crop Shinobi, it turned them to stone and made them watch the world progress forever, never allowing them to have any interaction if fate worse than death. Oh, okay, Naruto kun. And this is my pawn, Issei. He's quite weak, but he has the motivation to get stronger. I saved him because of my of one of my miscomings, I failed to see a threat to my territory, so I felt sorry for him and revived him. He has one of the weakest Seiko against Triskirkle, but maybe with a bit of training he might be able to get stronger, Rhea said unsurely. As Naruto looked at Issei, Issei glared at Naruto with rage and jealousy. Oh, it's nice to meet you, I guess. Protect me as well, Naruto said neutrally. I don't need your protect. I don't need your permission to protect the president. Just because you're a fiancé doesn't mean shit, you're not a husband yet. I'll probably take that from you. I'm her pawn and I don't care how strong you are, I will get stronger. Issei said with venom as Yuma Luna was about to strike him but was interrupted by Rias. Issei, that was so rude, don't talk to my Naruto like that, Rias yelled, making Issei back off but glare at Naruto. Ada Ada, Issei is talking bad about Naruto, perhaps I should punish him for being ungrateful to Naruto. He saved us from a fate worse than death from Riser, Arkano said, making Issei glare intensely but stopped when Arkano glared at him. He knew that this wasn't the teasing type of Akuna, she was actually wanting to punish him. Perfect is just jealous of Nartini. He's nice and strong. I like Nartini, but I don't like Perfect Issei Baka, Konika said as Issei got mad. Issei, you should be more grateful. I for one like Naruto As a friend, he's a good guy. And save and he saved Rias, that's a plus in my book, said Kiba Yuto. Are you serious? I've been with you lot for longer and you take his side? That fucking fox looking freak side? Issei yelled, making everyone gasp. That's enough, Issei. Gods, take him to his room. I'll be having a word with you later, Issei, for treating my Naruto like that. You know who spoiled you. Children in the family need to be punished. 
from now on he say you'll be cleaning the entire crew academy by yourself I'll talk to Sona your punishment will last for a month he has yelled that imbecile how dare he talk to Nata summer like that you and Luna said mad I'm sorry for his behaviour Nata then I don't know where I went wrong Rias says hugging him don't worry Rias Chan it's not your fault I'm thank you for you and Akno Chan and Kaneko and Kiba for defending me even though you, you knew him longer Nata said <laughs> you should put that Corn of yours on a leash, Yubeluna said. Ah, Nartokun, my brother-in-law. I've arranged an estate for you to live in Kuo, like we discussed. Sazek said, after finally convincing Nartokun to transfer to the school with a little help of Rias and Akka's puppy eyes, and an offer of infinite ramen. That fast, Nartokun pouted. Well, Rias Chan can't miss m- many lessons, Nartokun said. Sazek, oh, okay, Nartokun said. He knew Rias for some reason liked school and he didn't want to keep away from it. Probably because he, he, he thought that it was probably because it kept away from perverts like Riser. Oh by the way Nato, I have a gift for you. As thanks from the House of Gremlin, Grafia, my maid has agreed to join your Pirage. In fact she requested it herself, as it said, as Nato turned to Grafia. Please accept me Nato Summer, allow me to repay the debts for all you did for my little sister Rias. My, my little sister in law Rias, Grafia said. Nato, it will be an honour if you accepted Grafia into your Pirage. Sazek's wife, Eclair, said. Are you sure? Griffith Nato asked. Yes, I would love to join it. It will be an honour to serve you. Sazek's son has already has a Luffyage serving him, so me leaving him won't be a problem, Griffith said, talking about how his sister was serving her king. Very well then, Griffith, Nato said as he pulled out one mutated pawn. Due to Nato's power, he didn't require that many pieces, since he was already powerful himself. I am now yours, Nato, Summer, your pawn. I will do everything you want. I... I have one last mission, that's to take your new balloon to your mansion, Griefia said with a blush, as she felt the force of Nato when the pieces entered her. The free teleported to a estate where Nato saw a luxurious room. Griefia walked him through the estate until she arrived to the master bedroom. And that will be your room, Nato Summer. Also, this credit card is for you, as you are Rias Gremi's fiancé. You have access to all of the Gremia, Gremi's financing records and every and money that they have. You can spend as much as you want, Griefia said, handing him the card with a smell. Uh, are you sure I don't want to? Nato was then cut off by Griefia. The Gremlin family is more than, has more than enough money to provide for you. They are the richest family on earth. Trust me, you won't even spend a percentage, even with that ramen consuming stomach you have. Griefia jokingly said at the end, because Nato had asked her to act more like herself instead of acting like she's a robot or a maid programmed to do something, and that he preferred it that way. This made Sazek jealous because when he tried to do the same thing to his wife, she just, she just told him to shut up. School will also start on Monday, Nato, which is tomorrow, Yubeluna added on, making Nato moan. What? That early? Nato said. Now, now, Nato, Summer. Don't moan. Rear Summer will be there, Grafia said, making Nato blush and perk up a little bit. Nato grumbled and told the others to move into their room. As he walked into his room, he blushed when he saw Rias in a night room. Rias chan, what are you doing here? Nata started at her beauty. Oh, hi Nata kun. Uh, didn't brother tell you? I'm also moving in with you. I mean, I'm your fiancé. Unless you don't want me to, Rias said, faking hurt. As Nata rushed over to her. No, 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 of course I want you to stay, Rias chan. Nata says as he started to, as he started to help her unpack. Thank you, my dashing prince, for saving me from two evil perverts, Rise and Easy. And now, saving me from horrible unpacking, Rias jokes. After they were done unpacking, after they were done unpacking, Rias introduces Naruto to anime. After being horrified that he didn't know anything about it, the two watched a romcon as Rias eventually fell asleep on his chest. Rias, Rias, the season's over. We need to go to bed if we're going to wake up tomorrow. Naruto said as he hears her cute breathing. He looks down to see that she had fallen asleep on his chest while they were in the bed. Naruto smiles as he pressed the buttons and got comfortable on the bed as the lights turned off, sleeping with his fiancée. The next day Nato woke up and saw a note. Hi Nato Kun, uh, I will be going to school early and Sona needed me to help administrate Issa's punishment. So see you later, love Rias. After reading that, Nato came down and saw Yubeluna and Grafia make breakfast. After eating and bonding with his Piraj, Nato set off. When Nato entered the school, he saw Akno who motioned for him to come to her. As he went up to her, she began to speak. Welcome to Kuro Academy, Nautikun. 
will be sharing classes with President. But she's busy with Sona, so I've taken a privilege to sh show you around, Akna said. Uh, thanks, Akna Chan, Nati said, as he felt a bit sweaty and constricted due to not being used to such tight and warm clothes. He was used to loose clothes like his jumpsuit. So, Nautican, how has it been? Akna asked. Good, Akna Chan. Good, Akna Chan. What about you? Nato asked. All good. I miss you, though. I didn't have enough of you because we just kept hogging you. Can I come over, please? Akna asked as Nato looked at Sure, Akna Chan. Nato said as he was shown around the school, he could feel the jealousy from the male population. They were just like Ethan. This dimension's male population is fucked now that you're here. They're probably not going to get any woman, Krama said. Hey, we aren't dodging your dimension. I mean, look how fuck your dimension was. A kid getting beaten up by grown-ass men for saving them from a giant fox, Drake said, along with Albion, before brushing and fighting each other over who copied who, causing art side. These dragons were one of the strongest beings alive, yet they were arguing over such childish matters. They then made it to Sona's office, where Rias waves at him. Fix your uniform, Sona said. Uh, what? No, it's too tight already, Naruto replied. Fine, Rias told me we should let you get used to being in the school before enforcing any rules. But know this, Uzumaki, I got my eyes on you. You'll be a good student, Sona said, with a glimmer in her eyes that promised pain. If Naruto never obeyed, as Naruto started shaking his head up and down, even though he had more power, he still had the anime wo uh, boy's weaknesses too. You know, when women start getting angry. She then explained the rules, like no using what could be considered supernatural abilities on school. For example, no super strength, no high endurance, or anything like that. After Nato walked into class, he heard squeals and groans. He's so cute. Does he have a boyfriend? Yeah. It's another knight. No, it's a prince. Look, he looks like a cute fox. Oh man, not another pretty boy. Damn bastard, he's going to take all the gold. I'll kill him, was what was heard. Quiet down, class. This is a new student. Please introduce yourself, the teacher says. Hi, I'm Nato Uzumaki. I like Rhys Chan and Akuno Chan. Uh, I don't really like Ise that much, and if you want to fight, I will win, Naruto said as he looked at the boys when he said the last part, sending key, making a few of them drop on the floor scared, while the others were paralyzed for fear. Why didn't you take a seat next to Rias san, Naruto san, and please refrain from fighting, uh, said the team with a blush as he too liked his appearance. Naruto walked to the towards Rias, who smiled at him, as he looked at Akna who was on his other side. Eventually, after what felt like thousand years of death, the bell rang. The rest of the day went similarly, with basically Rias and Akuna hung around with each other, much to the displeasure of Issei, his group of favorites and the men of the school. Well, the boys of the school, because they couldn't be considered men. A few weeks had passed over, and Naruto had bonded with Akuna and Rias, as well as his Piraj, Grafia and Yubaluna. Akuna now stays over more. They were currently in the ORC main room when they heard a knock and two figures entered. Naruto sees the period since tense up. Calm down guys, I allow these exorcists to come here. They are here on behalf of the church, Ria says, as he as Naruto and the Piraj calm down. The two then explain how the fragments of the Excalibur were stolen and how the criminal Kokobio had been the thief, has been located in Gremlin territory. After fighting with Issa and Kiba, Naruto steps up. How about you two face me? I can't forgive you for your threat against Rias in if she interferes in the matter in her own territory. It's her business for outsiders to be controlled in her territory. You outsiders have no business in this territory. You have no place to tell her what to do, me, her fiancé what to do, or tell her Piraj what to do. Also, you belittling Ozia in the Gremory territory without knowing the circumstances of her exile and the reason why she became a devil while automatically assuming she's a bad person shall not go unpunished. Naruto says as Azia blushes when Naruto stood up for her, while Rias blushed when Naruto called her his fiancée. Naruto kun, there's no need for you to get injured like Kiba san and Ise san. You did fight against her, Azia says unknowingly, adding kun to Naruto's knee. It's okay, Azia chan. You know me, you see my strength. I've got this, Naruto says. Why do you defend the devils? You're a human, they're not your race. I don't understand, why would you want to marry one? They are pure evil, Zenobia says. That's it, who are you to judge if a devil is evil or not, if Rias is evil or not? You're, you exorcists are just the same. It's not 
you're born evil or your race is evil, you choose to be evil. How many exorcists have killed, raped and blackmailed? Naruto says, how dare you? The church can never do such things, Zenobia says. Oh really, the church isn't evil? Then how about the Holy Sword project? That's right, Rias told me all about that little project. Your commanders did to, and what your commanders did to the kids, to the orphans that trusted the church, Naruto says. I won't let you belittle the church. I accept the duel. You will pay for your insolence. With pain, I will beat you to enlightenment. I'll make you forget about the devil, Zenobia says. Yeah, and plus, the church kicked those monsters out, so you can't say the church did nothing, Irina says. The three walked to the sports ground of the church as the three got into position. Naruto on one side and Zenobia and Irina on the other. Start, Rhea said, as the two exorcists rush at Naruto. We just dodged the strikes as if it was nothing. Too slow, is that all you've got? Naruto says mockingly. How are you that fast? No matter. Let's see how you keep up with our full speed, Zenobia says, as she goes full speed with Irina. As Naruto dodges a slash by ducking down, and then one from Irina at the bottom and one from Zenobia at the top. As this continued until the two were tired, sweating and breathing heavily. Naruto flicks them both as they both fall on the ground rubbing their bums and the areas of the flip. You should train harder, your speed is just slow, again it's faster. And then adding to that your attacks are really predictable, they have no unpredictability. People can predict your next pattern and even if you had speed you wouldn't be able to fight most opponents, Naruto says. Naruto then walks over to Ryu as the two exorcists just leave ashamed and defeated. Ozzy then comes up to Naruto with a blush. Thank you for defending me, Naruto Kun Ozzy says as she turned redder and hugged him. Issei wakes up to see this. He was seething in jealousy. How dare that ungrateful Asya do this to him. He saved her, not Naruto, not that dickhead that took his girls. She should be hugging him, not Naruto. Issei would have to talk to her about this afterwards. She's only allowed to hug Issei, not Naruto, Issei thought. Asya then turned to Rias with a shy look. Um, Miss Rias, I don't really feel comfortable living with Issa anymore. He's perverted and always walks in on me in the shower or when I'm changing. He always makes sounds watching his dirty movie and he's just so rude to his nice parents. I just can't stay there, Azia says. It's okay, Azia. You can move to the Gremory Uzumaki mansion. It's more than big enough. And by the way, that's, that offers open up to anybody who wants to participate. Well, apart from Issa, Rias says. Ara Ara, a chance to spend time with Naruto Kun. I'm in, Akuna says. It can't hurt, Naruto needs an pervert, Konika says. Well, Azi, I'm not that bad, I promise to improve. You can't move in with Naruto, you can't leave me, Issei says begging. But his tone changed to disgust when he said Naruto. Issei, what's wrong with my fiancé? I've had enough. Ever since I got engaged to Naruto, you've been so rude. I like Naruto, and so does Akuna, and maybe Adia. Stop being jealous, it's disgusting, Rias yells. It's true, Issei. I've seen. I see you as a little brother, not, uh, not anything else. Said Akuna's sister, zoning him. I like you as a friend. But if you continue to hate Naruto, -kun, I won't be your friend. Azia says. Never be rude to Naruto, you pervert. Said Konako, mad. Issei got mad as Naruto watched. He had noticed that Kiba had left. Wait, guys, where is Kiba? Naruto says. I think. I think he left. Konako says. Uh, we should meet up tomorrow to see if Kiba comes. If not, we will search for him said the purge as they all agreed to that. As Naruto and Rhys arrived home with Akno, Konoko and Ozia. After helping them move in, Rhys, Akno, Ozia and Konoko were on the battleground, along with Grafia and Yubaluna who was also there. So I will now be training you all personally, Naruto says as he made shadow guns. Each of you will take one of these clones who will be helping you train, Naruto says as the girls got excited at a chance to get stronger and spend time with Naruto. With Akuno, Naruto had observed Akuno. She was known for two things by her friends, her, f her flirting antics and her sadism. It was something she had no issues with at too. She loved to tease others and make them feel uncomfortable. But what many did not know was this was merely just an act. In truth, from what Naruto had gathered, Akuno was a fragile girl. Her past before she was taken in by the Gremory family was something that brought her close to tears whenever anybody would mention it. But she didn't let anybody in because they could hurt her like what happened in her past. Her antics were just an emotional mask, one that Naruto easily saw through 
as he too had won. He saw how she interacted with her friends. It was carefully planned out to keep them with her but also a distance away from her that would keep her safe. She knew very well her sadistic side would scare people off but and he knew emotional mask since he had worn one for a long long time until he reached this world. He was a Jintroki, a human sacrifice that was used to hold and contain Kurama the Ninetales. Hiding the pain is something he felt he needed to do in order to get by as a child. So in order to try and get to the root of her problems, he had left a clone with the others while personally going for the queen herself. Alright Akuno, let's see what you can do. Ara Ara, I'll be sure to impress you, Sensei, she said adding a sultry undertone to the title she gave him. I'm a queen piece, but I suppose you could say that I'm more of a balanced bishop. I prefer to utilize my magic in fights, leaning more towards lightning, but I can still fight without it to a degree. Okay then, show me your magic. She nodded before she summoned forth her Miko outfit and began to rain down bolts of lightning on a tree a few yards ahead of her. Naruto and Kama watched how she used it. Sure, she was strong, but the blonde also made sure to see the girl's expression. She held herself back due to her negative emotions which made her unable to access her fallen angel side. She could be as strong as a high class devil if she were to use her fallen angel powers which was about a tuning in ninja ranking. If she stopped holding herself back and not utilizing her and by utilizing her full power, her fallen angel power with her devil power would be deadly. Reese would never lose a rating game ever again seeing as holy lightning was really effective against devils and the daughter of a high class fallen angel, a cadre class fallen angel, would definitely have the power to beat almost every devil known. It was concerning to see she was pouring such negative emotions into her lightning, as he could see the pent up anger and sorrow in her eyes when she used it. Most people wouldn't look at her eyes when she attacked, being more focused on the lightning, trying to defend himself from the lightning, but Naruto was observant, he saw this. It was definitely a red flag to him. Alright, that's enough, he said, and she complied after one bolt, after one last bolt, schooling her features. For starters, you're skilled with your magic, and I don't think we really need to work on it. Thank you, Akne said with a smile. However, your source for your magic is concerning. She barely stopped herself from flinching at the statement. What do you mean? The source of all of our magic is our own reserves, Akne said. True, but that's not what I meant, and you know it, he said seriously. Sighing, he took a seat on the grass and waited for her to do the same. Akne, you're pouring a lot of anger and sadness into your attack. It may give you focus, but it could seriously hamper you, Naruto says. What do you know, she reported, but her tone was much softer and sadder than she normally used. I bet you don't have anything to hate anymore, since everyone you hated are now probably dead or powerless, Akne says. Not true. There, is, there are plenty of things I could hate. However, I don't use my hatred because I've seen what is done to people. Reaching over, he thumbed her cheeks, wiping away a stray tear that was rolling down on it. Her eyes were wide as she looked at him, seeing him give a small smile of encouragement. Don't let your anger control you, Akno. It isn't worth it, Naruto said. What do you mean, she asked, looking at him confused. I once knew someone, a vile man, when I had my loyalty he was on. His name was Sasuke Uchiha. The loyalty seals tricked me into thinking that I was meant to be his best friend. I was meant to protect him. He gave it his hatred. In the end, he threw away every chance he had at happiness. He even killed the man he believed to be the source of his hatred. But it wasn't enough for him. He got nothing but pain and suffering in the end. I'm not telling you to forgive whoever hurt you. But don't let your pain control you. You will never be happy. Don't be a Sasuke Uchiha. Be a Naruto Uzumaki with his loyalty seals on. Actually don't be that, but just be a Naruto Uzumaki, Naruto said. What do you mean? She asked the cat confused. Sign. He pulled back his hand, much to her disappointment, and said, I once... She looked at, uh, to him in surprise while he looked down sadly. It showed in his expression he was still hurting from the betrayal of his 
off his former home and she couldn't help but wonder if she would one day hurt her friends if she let the anger consume him or her. She hugged her knees and looked to him sadly. What do I do? She asked. He scooted over to her side, sitting down right next to her so that she could lean on him. Talk to me, Akne. Why are you angry? Naruto asked her. Take a breath, the troubled young girl explained her whole story, how she was a priestess and her mother tree married a fallen angel and her family who were disgusted by her bloodline killed her family, killed her mother, hunted her down until Rias saved her. After that I joined Rias and went into hiding because they would kill me, she continued on. Because you were half fallen angel asked Naruto, making her blonde. Yes, but then the clan found out and tried to kill me because of my cursed blood. But my mother paid the price. She was already crying and Naruto wrapped her arm around her for comfort. She leaned into him more as she continued to her tears. Eventually Rias found me since I'd been serving the uh, Gremly house for so long and I doubt I could ever repay my debt to her for saving my life. But you still hate your father, Naruto finished, which she nodded to. You know, for a time, I hated my father too. You see, he was the one who gave me what was the burden, and I ended up being seen as a symbol of what had brought my home to ruin, of what had destroyed so many lives. You could have done something else, made someone else a living sacrifice for our home. I won't lie, when I finally met him, I punched him, Naruto says. Why did you do more, Agno asked. Because I finally understood the position he was in. He was the leader of our village. And if he couldn't ask for another family to make... If he couldn't sacrifice his own, he couldn't... Then he couldn't ask another family to sacrifice their own. If he wasn't willing to do the same. Not so squeezing his shoulder gently. It still hurt to think that his father chose the village over him. Even though he understood why. He was brainwashed by the villagers. To think of that mentality. But still, it still hurt. I know why he did it. That was the reason why I wasn't that angry at him. You should try and find out why your father or did what he did to you. My father, let me tell you, our village is poisonous. It gives you a poisonous mindset that as long as you sacrifice everything for the village, you're a good man, good woman, good kunichi, good shinobi. That's the poison they feed you since you're young. And since young people are really acceptable, they end up believing it for the rest of their lives. What I'm saying is you don't need to forgive your father right away. What I'm saying is don't put all your anger on him until you know the whole story, Naruto says. But what if I don't like what the whole story is, she asked. She saw him give a sad smile as he answered. Honestly, I can't answer that. All I can tell you is in the end it's your choice if you want to forgive him. Just don't let this anger have a hold on you. You'll destroy yourself. You'll destroy everybody. I've seen it done to too many people. The whole shinobi nation was in a cur cursed cycle of hatred and anger. In the end, look what that got them. Destroyed. Powerless. Their lives ruined. Even the sages its path. Even the gods abandoned them. Naruto said. She was silent as she leaned against him. His, his woman comforting her. The whole time, her thoughts were running a mile a minute as she began to see what it was that the blonde human next to her was saying it was hard but she would try to keep herself from falling into a cycle of hatred how how, how do i start she started out turning to him to see him smiling brightly at her causing her cheeks to blush warmly for starters focus on what on positive feeling you know when you had when you were with your mother you know what this is she shook her head as she smiled a softer it's love. She loved you, Akno said, and you loved her. You n it's love. She loved you, Akno, and you loved her. More than anything, focus on that. Focus on the feeling of love and try to use the lightning again, Naruto said. He turned to her slowly, squeezing her shoulders gently as he had her face another tree. And she stared down at it. She then took a few deep breaths, each one bringing a happy memory she had with her mother. And one last final breath. One last memory, she was smiling truer and happier than she had ever done before. With a happy tear rolling down her cheek, she summoned forth lightning.
boom, one single bolt did more damage than all of the bolts she did before. Naruto couldn't contain the grin on her fi on his face as he saw the magic strike down like true flashes of the heavens. It was enough to scare him. She wasn't even trying to seek a sense that. He was also really wrong on how he power scaled her. Her power clearly exceeded the high class and borderline the ultimate class. After that, Naruto sat there while Akno hugged him. Eventually, Akno went to go and do her queenly duties. Naruto was still sitting there thinking about everything as he heard a voice but he did not get into a fighting position as he sensed no ill intention from the intruder. Nice night she said as the Naruto turned he saw a girl with black ears just like Konoko. He got memories from speak about Konoko he got memories from his clone that was training with Konoko. His clone managed to convince Konoko to use Chaka his clone showed her that using Senjutsu isn't bad and it does turn people mad. It was just Konoko's fears and negativity that made her unable to control Senjutsu. Once she was over that, she was able to use it like it was natural. After helping her relax, Naruto had seen Konoko go from a mid-class devil to a mid-ultimate class devil. Her natural affinity to Chaka and Senjutsu was just strong. It was greater than the Uchiha clan, the Hyuga clan, just behind the Uzumaki clan. But then again, she was a yokai. It was her race's power. Looking at the voice that startled him, or not startled him, that spoke to him, he turned around. Hello there, Miss Kuroka. I heard about you from Konoko. You know, your reputation has done quite a number on your little sister. She was afraid of using shark and senjutsu, Naruto said calmly, surprising Kuroka as he knew who she was. Not only that, Naruto managed to convince her little Sharon to use chakra and senjutsu. I figured, I saw how you helped her by the way, thank you for that. Yeah, I was afraid that she would deny who she was for the rest of her life, yeah, Kuroka said. You're not that bad Kuroka, definitely not insane, that's for sure, speak to you right now I can tell that. And you're using sentences as we speak, so there's no way that you're insane. Why didn't you tell me your story, Nart says. Kuroka wanted not to tell him, but Naruto's aura was just so comforting, it made her want to tell it. As she explained everything about how her sister was taken in by a devil family with her and how they ran tests on her and how one night he threatened to use Sharon and she couldn't stand it. She could take all the torture, all of the experimenting but she would never let her sister be killed. After she killed her master, her king, she couldn't take Konika with her because living a life on run was going to be hard and living it with Konika who didn't deserve it would be even harder and the page members that survived told lies they were petty she, they said they said that she went mad with, Kenji, uh, with Senjutsu you'll have to talk to her at some point she needs to know the truth from you and not from some rumors Naruto told her I know I'm just still waiting for the right time Kuroka I can help you I know you have the evidence to clear your name just don't do anything bad promise me Naruto says you'll do that for me but why help someone that you just met Kuroka asked, surprised. Look, you didn't do anything. You're like me, blamed by people with the rational fear of your power and hatred towards you. And you're like Itachi, one of the only shinobi who protected me when I was a weakling in the village. Like Itachi, you gave up ev Like Itachi, you gave up, gave up everything to protect your family. And that is something I respect, Naruto says as finally red light flashed and Sir Zex came out of a magical portal. So Zex saw Kuroka and his energy surrounded him, as Kuroka started to get scared, but when Naruto got in front of her, she calmed down, his aura was comforting. Naruto, get away, she's a S rank criminal, So Zex said. Kuroka got scared that Naruto would leave her to her fate, she couldn't escape. So Zex stopped, she never did anything, he never got inside of the story, only the side of the peerage members that hated her. Hear her out, please, Naruto said, placing her hand on Kuroka, hand making her blush. His chakra it was so powerful, so warm, so comforting. Fine, please tell me your side, Kuroka. I will determine what will be done after hearing it, Suzek said, as Kuroka explained everything. Do you have proof? Suzek says as Kuroka nodded. She handed him recording and evidence of the and paper evidence of the testing that was done on her. Suzek was shocked. Damn it, I'm sorry. We killed off a whole race based of we killed off a whole base. We killed off a whole race based off a lie. 
My apologies, Croker. I should have waited for your side before going on offensive. Your name is now cleared, Sazek says, as Croker hugged Naruto before saying thank you to Sazek, then turning towards Naruto. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's all thanks to you. I could go and see my little sister. She cried out. However, since you're a devil, Croker, you will have to transfer to a period, or some nobles will come after you, wanting to add you to your to their peerage, no doubt, because of the way you look. Or if you disagree, they'll declare you astray once again. Since when masters are killed, their peerage is often the property of the family members or friends of the king. But since I made a mistake, I'll let you pick your peerage. You can pick anybody from Dias to Sona to even Naruto, even though he's not a devil, if he agrees, says Sazex. I could join Naruto kun. Please accept me, Naruto kun. Take me in, Croker says. As not accepting making a bishop. Croker, thanks for your trust in me. I will never break it. Never will any devil, angel, fallen angel, dragon, or any race, not even humans, will ever hurt you again. I, I promise you that you will be safe. You are now my bishop and I will protect you, Naruto declares, making Croker blush. As she gives him a peck on the lips. I will do my best to serve you in return, she says. Naruto, Croker and Sazex are then interrupted by Angry Rias who stomped her way towards Naruto. She was with Arkno, Raytheon and Yubiluna. When she saw Croker, she was shocked. What's she doing here, Naruto? Quick, get away, she's a criminal. Rias said, worried for her fiancé. Ex-criminal, actually, sister, Sazex said as he explains everything. Rias was shocked. But then she rem remembered why she came in and why she was angry. That stupid Issei went to find the Excaliburs. From what Konika reported to me, he wanted to go and impress the exorcists so he can seduce them into joining his harem. He's trying to start a war. The angels will get mad if you take their exorcists. And Kiba's also gone missing, but not, uh, not because of Issei, because of something else, Rhea said as she was angry at Issei and worried for Kiba. Don't worry, we'll find Kiba. But let's go and find Issei so you can punch him first. But before that, meet my new bishop, Croker, Naruto says. Croker, this is my pro, Jubaluna is my queen while Grafia is my pawn. Grafia, Jubaluna, this is your new comrade, Croker, say hi. She's a bishop, Naruto said. It's nice to meet you, I'm Jubaluna, Jubaluna says, uh, knowing her king couldn't be wrong so she wouldn't judge her. I'm Grafia, I will protect Naruto with my life, Grafia says, as she was warning her not to betray Naruto. I'm Croker. Nice to meet you, by the way, Croker says. Naruto sat there as he watched Issei get hit a thousand times. Konoko was mad as she also joined in after she heard what Issei's plan was, which wasn't to save Cuba, but it was just Issei using that as an excuse to get close to her and also to try and seduce the angels, or not the angels, but the exorcists. Beat him more, Buchisama, Konoko yelled. Now Issei, I've had enough of you. For your punishment, you will go a month without relieving yourself, you won't read any of those books you read, you won't re watch any of those filthy videos you watch, you won't peek on anyone. To make sure that you won't do it, I've cast a spell on you. This is a curse that won't allow you to do any of the stuff I've mentioned for a month. You will also apologize to these girls here. You will also fulfill 20 contracts by the end of the month or you will be punished even more. I regret wasting a piece on you and feeling sorry for your dumb ass. You really are a huge waste of space, Issei, Rias says. Naruto walked down to Rias and hugged her, calming her down. Oh Naruto, can what do I do with him? The Grammys have never ha discarded their pieces, but I fear I might have to do that, Rias cried on his shoulder, making Naruto and the other girls glare at Issei. It was his fault. It it's his fault anyways. If he never appeared, I wouldn't have have to resort to these measures. I would have had you. I would have saved you from Ryza. Then I would have had the harem, not him. I would have had Akna, you, Konika and Azia. Issei said, Be quiet, Issei. You absolutely disgust me. How would you even beat Ryza? It's not like you have the boosted gear. It's not like you have divine dividing. It's not like you have Krama. You're just a weak, common secret gear user. You only want me for my body, not who likes me for being me. Rhea says, I can't believe that you think that Archie like you. That's the reason why I moved out. I'm more than just a piece of meat for your pleasure. Miriam and Katsuki were right about you. You're just a de degenerate. They perv. Azia screamed, slapping him in the face. Everybody glared at Issei, who glared at Naruto, thinking this was all his fault. What, 
What, can't fight your own battles for you? You're really strong, aren't you? Need your helm that you stole from me to fight for you, Isi said, as Naruto just shook his head. If I fought you, you'll be dead. I don't waste time speaking. You have a low tier sacred gear. Your strength is that of a child. A baby devil surpa uh, surpasses your magic strength, stamina, and your brain cells. You aren't special in any way. You say you beat Riser. With what? Price critical? 2 times 0 is still 0. You have no power. Y you are no good. You just have one track disgusting perverted mind. Your personality sucks. You will never have a home. In fact, since Rius can't do it, as Rius is fiancé, this is your last chance. You fuck up and you get kicked out of the Pirage. Forever, I will protect my Rius chance reputation. Naughty as mad as Rius blushed at Naughty calling her his and claiming to protect her. Y you can't do that, Yusei started out. He can, Rius says, stealing herself. She won't let Naughty be disrespected by this disgrace of a man. Richie, you can't be serious. He's trying to split us up. Can't you see, ever since he arrived, he's taken you all from me. You're all mine, I claimed you, Isi yelled madly. Me? Yours? Don't ever say that, you ugly de degenerate perv. I only saved you because I felt bad that the Fallens killed you because of my mistake, because I neglected to take care of my area, not because I liked you. You think you're special? You have the weakest sacred gear. You have a disgusting personality. You look ugly and always have a bad hair day and you're so rude. Naruto can do none of those things, he's the opposite. He's smart, handsome, strong, not perverted and overall a good guy, Rhea says as she purposely hugged Naruto. But she was right, I hate you Issei. You made me think that you were my friend, but you just had such dirty and disgusting intentions for me. How could you take advantage of my innocence like that? Naruto can is better than you, Ozzy says hugging Naruto. They're right, you see. Nautican is the best. He helped me get over my hatred for my father and helped me, well, get over my hatred and replace it with love for him, for mom, but not for you. And he's been here, and ever since he's been here for the last few days or weeks, he's made everything better. You've been with us for a few months and the only thing you thought about is yourself or how to use us as meat for your disgusting desires. I like Naruto and Agnes is hugging Naruto. I never liked Issei the pervert. Naruto knee is the best and he helped me get my Kroka nature back, Konoko says as she hugged Kroka. Naruto had explained everything to her with Serzex and she was happy that her sister wasn't evil. You have to agree Naruto Osama is the best, Yubiluna and Grafia said. Naruto walked up to Zenobi and Irina. I must apologize for my fiancé's stray pawn. If you wish you may punish him. Naruto says, as Irina said no, but Zenobia smirked. She walked up to Issei with Durando in her hand. It's time to save all women from you, you disgusting perverted bastard, Zenobia says as she slices off his rod and his balls clean. Issei screamed out in pain as he got castrated. Nobody felt bad, not even Naruto. However, Naruto did cover his rod, as that was a reaction from any man that would see such a thing. How dare you! That was my precious! How are you going to give birth to my kids now, you bitch? Issei yelled as Naruto got mad. Naruto rushed over to Issei, kicking him in the jaw, shattering it. Learn to speak to women with respect. She had every right after what you did, Naruto yelled, making Zenobia blush. This was the first time a man had protected her dignity, especially one who never owed her anything. I heard you two don't have a place to stay. Well, you can stay at the Grammy Mansion until you solve your problems. As compensation for Issei's wrongdoings, Naruto says. Zenobia and Irina hesitated, but they agreed eventually. They had nowhere to go. The group headed towards Naruto and Rhea's house's entrance as they relaxed. As Issei left, no longer being welcomed in, he was escorted out. So Irina, Zenobia, how have you found Kuro to be? Naruto asked. Well, Kuro is my hometown. I'm used to it. I used to be friends with that perverted abomination. But you saved me and my partner, thank you. I can't believe he was trying to do it with us. He used to be such a kind person. Do you think he's just disgusting? He was trying to corrupt us and he would have started a war, Irina said. It's a nice and beautiful town. It could do without nails like Issei though, Zenobia said. The three talked until his night. Naruto then went to his and Rias' room, while Zenobia and Irina went to their room. Akuno and Azia, as well as Naruto's Pirage, Rafia, Yubaluna and Kroka were also in Naruto's bed as they all cuddled onto Naruto with Rias. 
The next morning Naruto woke up and found Zenobi and Irina had left. He must really need to find that fallen angel, Hokobi and Naruto mused. Uh, eventually, when the girls never returned, they went look around and they found an injured Zenobi and Irina. Ho 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 ho. Sister of the false Lucifer, Sir Zex. I wonder if I kill you, will Sir Zex come? No, I have a better plan. I'll kill both you and the Citri errors. Then I can face two false Satans, Seraphul Leviathan and Sir Zex. Lucifer, Kokobio said as he flew towards the academy. Quick, we need to get to Sona, Ria says. In a few seconds they arrived to Kuro, flying at top speed. To see Sona's pirage losing, Sona was about to get stabbed by Kokobio, which will start a war. Guys, relax, I will take care of this, Nata says as he makes some hand signs. Wind style, great wind breakthrough, Nata says as the wind smashes into Kokobio, sending him crashing into war. Grafie and Yubiluna were called by Sazex as they sent him a message and he told them to come to the castle in the underworld to explain it. But Naruto was there so Sazex didn't really fear Rias or Sona getting hurt. Who dare attack the mighty Kokobu? Survivor of the Great War and the true leader of the Fallen Angels. Well once I kill that peaceful bastard Kok Kokobu said. I dare Naruto says. I dare not, he says, stepping up, making Sona's Piraj blush, as well as his own and Rias's, were the girls. Kokobio rushes at Naruto, who puts out his hands. Shinra Tensei, Naruto says, sending Kokobio crashing back. How dare you treat me like an insect, you pathetic human, Kokobio says. Do you have a problem with me being human? Naruto asks, his voice turning dangerous. And human like yourself should be weak. You're an abomination. How dare you be strong when your kind is meant to be weak. You shouldn't even have chakra, but no matter. Let's see how your precious friends can defend against my summoned creature, Cerberus, Kokobio said. As he commanded it attacked, the, the dog was summoned and it rushed towards the Pirage, but it was soon slashed by Zenobia Durando. Kibo also comes in and fights the priest with his new balance breaker, Holy Eraser. Naruto also sees Issei walking up to Kokobio, making Naruto get intrigued of what this weakling could do. The sorry excuse of man would try to fight a somewhat decently strong being for this universe. Kokobio, I shall defeat you and then the girls will see that I'm better than Naruto and shall be in my harem and I shall be the harem king. Issei says as everybody stopped what they were doing, including the Cerberus, as they all, including the Cerberus, started laughing. You defeat me with what? A common sacred gear? The weakest sacred gear in existence? And twice critical? Please, just leave. It will be a dishonor for me to even breathe the same air as you. You were just a Grammy Eris' pity project. I heard you're not even that anymore. You're a waste to a peerage, a waste to life, a waste to existence, Kokobio says. Issa gets mad as he rushes towards Kokobio, who just flicks him away, sending him flying before turning to Naruto. Why did you help him? Is he not your precious Rias' pawn? Kokobio says as Naruto has chuckled. No, he's just a nuisance. The only reason Rias doesn't give, kick him out is because he wouldn't survive as the reincarnated devil that is peerageless and her grimly mentality, which I respect her for, won't allow her to discard him. She is already mad at him, plus if he learnt that he's no one special, it will help him in the long run. He only started war by seducing an angel, exorcist, Naruto replied as Kokobio dodged a strike from Zenobia and punched her sending her flying. Naruto caught her before she got hurt. Zenobia opened her eyes, feeling a little bit dazzled, as when she opened them she saw the most handsome man and she felt warm. Kami Sama, is that you? Zenobia said. Nope Zenobia, it's me, Naruto. Naruto said as Zenobia's blush got redder. Uh, th thanks for saving me, she started out as Naruto put her down on the ground. No problem, Naruto says as Zenobia straightened herself and took a fighting stance. Kokobio, for your crimes against God, you will pay. Zenobia says as Kokobio started laughing. You're so obedient to someone who's dead. Your Kami, your precious Kami is dead. Kami died in the sacred, in the Great War. Kokobio said uh, laughing. No, it, it, it can't be. The prayers, they still work. Yeah, you're lying. Zenobia said holding on to hope. <laughs> Michael really fooled you, didn't he? He's playing God by granting prayers and making sure the sacred gear system works. I mean look, it practically failed since that man you're with, Naruto Uzumaki, has two sacred gifts. That shouldn't even be possible. 
He tries to keep sense of order by doing that. Kokobio laughed as he spoke that. No, 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 it can't be, Zenobia said, dropping to the ground. Her fate in the church was broken. Kokobio took pleasure in seeing Zenobia fall into despair, making Nata get mad. How dare you? What was the point in hurting poor Zenobia-chan? Nata says, mad. This reminded him of how the villagers always took time to destroy any semblance of hope or happiness he had. Zenobia blushed at Nata being protective to her feelings. If Kami-sama isn't alive, then I will have Nata Kim's kids. He is strong and cares for me, Zenobia thought. Nata rushed at Kukubil, mad at being reminded of Konoha, his red and white wings materializing, his form turning into golden as a single tail, tail appeared behind him. His power was felt throughout the world, the earth, the heavens, the underworld, Gregory, the dimensional gap was shook from Nata's power. Was this power Aziza fought? The very cause of Gregory was being shaken. This power, why is Nata going out this much? Says X fought as the depth of the underworld shook. Prepare the fool, Satan. We might have to have a conference, says X says. This power, it reminds me of Kami-sama, Gregory said as the heaven shook. Yes, it does. It's so powerful. It might surpass Great Red, said Michael. This power, it's so powerful, Yasaka thought as the whole earth shook. His power, it can help me beat back a red, Orpheus said. Great Red was flying as he stopped. He sensed the power coming from Earth. It rivaled his own. No, it surpassed his. <laughs> it seems my title of all strongest is being threatened. But perhaps it's time to train for when I have to fight this, this, this powerful figure. Great Red said, Divide, boost, divide, boost, was heard as Nata divided Kokobiro's power and boosted his own. Tell Beast Bomb, Nata yelled, crushing his spear into Kokobiro's heart. He was too weakened to prevent him from doing so as Kokobiro died instantly. Nata couldn't be yelled, turning towards Nata and running towards him as she hugged him. Nata smiled as he patted her head. It's okay, Beast Chan, I'm okay. There's no way some there's no way someone like Kokobiro could beat me, Nata says. You're so reckless, you know, Ria says, hugging him. Eventually everybody came and had a group hug. Well apart from Kiba and Saji and Issei. Well, Kiba just chose not to, and the girls told Saji and Kiba, Kiba to stay away. Eventually, everybody headed back to the ORC building. Before that, Zenobia went to talk to Rias. When everybody arrived to the ORC building, Rias had an announcement. Okay, guys, I've got an announcement. We have a new member, Rias says. As Zenobia walks out, Issei, who was still injured from Kokobiro's flick, ran towards her like a hungry dog for meat, looking at her like meat. So, you're now a devil. Wanna be my babes? He asked desperately as Zenobia ignored him and walked up to Nata pulling his head into her breast. Nata can peace let me procreate with you. It's a handsome and strong, Zenobia says, making it easy to get mad. As Nata's joy is dropped, uh, I think we should have some time to develop a relationship before that happens, but only if Rias allows it, because I am promised to her, Nata says. As Rias just said she wouldn't mind, as Nata has already got Arkano and Azia, so. Having a few more wouldn't hurt her. Issei marches over to Nato, grabbing him by his collar. What the hell is your secret? How do you get ham? It's supposed to be me that's meant to be the ham king. Issei yelled. He was about to slap Nato, but re escorted her his hand and slapped him. I've heard enough of you, Issei. Know your place. Normally I don't treat my servants like slaves. However, you're just insufferable, annoying, and just plain arts revolting. You won't be the ham king. Get that in your thick head. No girl would ever like you. Don't you don't you ever compare yourself to my Nautican ever again. Get out. Get out. I think I, and think of your mistakes. If I ever see you speak bad to Nautican ever again, I will kill you myself, Rhea says. Her power of destruction showing, Issei walked out in fear, but anger directed towards Nautican. I was here first, he says, before he closes the door behind him. Nautican, you don't have to stay quiet when Issei threatens you. We'll be right to you, Ria says. It's not that. I just don't want to speak to him. He practically disgusts me. His existence is playing us revolting to me. I gave him so many chances and he ruins it. All because he thinks not with his brain, not with his heart, but with his one inch disgrace. Nautic says as everybody starts laughing and agreeing. You're right, giving him attention would just make him even more unsufferable because we have to hear his annoying voice more often. I feel bad for his parents though. But anyways, let's leave, Ria says as everybody leaves to, to their house. When they arrived home, they get in 
and get into a fighting stance as they see Azizel. So you're the boy who was laying out that show of strength and you're Rias Grammy's fiance and the person with two sacred gifts, something that's never happened before, Azizel says. Azizel, governor of the fallen angels, what are you doing trespassing on Grammy territory? First your subordinates, then your leader class, Adriel, and now yourself. What is it do you want? You're not getting Nartokan. If you want Issa, you can have him, Rhea says as the destruction magic surrounds her. I assure you I'm allowed to be here. You can even ask your brother. I was invited by your king personally, Azizel says as Nart stepped forward. Be that so, you are not invited to our house, Nart says as he narrowed his eyes, leaking some king intent, making Azizel stumble in fear. The girls wasn't affected by it because Nartokan has never had any ill intention towards them. They could feel it in the killing intent. It wasn't directed to them. Arkna had lightning charge around her. I also got in a fighting position that she learned from Naruto's clone. Yubi Luna and Grafia teleported into the room. Grafia then stepped up. Naruto Summer, please don't attack attack Azazel. Doing so would start a war. Something you have been preventing, Grafia says. Naruto nodded and backed down as, all, as did all of the other girls. Azazel left. The next few days had passed until it was the day of the three factions meeting. Naruto was prepared. He had some kunai's combat clothes and his best kunai equipped. Naruto also helped Rias' bishop Gaspar to control his sacred gear. He also left a cologne to defend him. The ORC entered the room of the conference. Naruto looked to see the leaders of the factions, Sezex and Seraphu, Lord Michael and Azazel. He also saw another white-haired boy who was on Azazel's side. He looked at Naruto with jealousy. Oh, not another one, Naruto thought. Ah, come on in, Sezex says, as they entered. As you all know, the three factions have been trying to keep a fragile piece of peace. However, after an attack from Kirkabil, who is a fallen angel, and what Azazel had declared a stray fallen angel after his death, something needs to be done, says Sazek, says everybody nodded. Well, I have a suggestion. Let's go full peace. Let's sign a treaty. I never meant to attack your sister. Like, stray devils don't mean to, like, you don't mean for stray devils to attack any of our people. Stray fallen angels happen too as well, you know, as Azazel says. You wish to go in peace? Why? If there's war, you can easily win it with your research in creating sacred gears equivalent to Dong Genesis and your vast, your, your vast army, Michael says. I don't wish for a war. I wish to carry on my research and make my sacred gears better, as Azazel says. Why don't we ask the true dragon emperor? He is significant in this, as if he decides to go against the factions, he will destroy us, Michael says. Naruto, why didn't you tell us your goals, Azazel says, as Naruto mentally rolled his eyes. He doesn't hate Azazel, but it will take some time for him to forgive his carelessness. Naruto stepped up. My intention is to protect my family, which includes Rias, her family, her Piraj, and my Piraj. Naruto says as everybody decided he was truthful. As he stepped back to Rias, and Rias held his hand. Naruto, the clone who was with Gaspar and Konoko, saw a bunch of mages attacking. Naruto's clone leaps, leapt into action. Firestorm, majestic flame destroyer, Naruto says, as he burnt all of them alive. One of Naruto's clones dispelled sending knowledge back to Naruto. Naruto got the message, and boom, the fallen brigade, the chaos brigade ha had attacked. Naruto created a barrier, protecting everybody. You, you're the boss that stopped us from getting the sister of the fake Lucifer's bishop, said Katria as the Sengun Naruto says, getting mad as he le leapt at her, killing her instantly. Airstyle, girl palm, Naruto yells, taking out most of the attackers as the other angels, fallen angels and devils started attacking the Chaos Brigade. Suddenly, Naruto was hit from behind. Looking behind him, he saw Issei corrupted with purple energy around him. And Vali also corrupted with purple energy as they both held objects in their hands. Vali, what is the meaning of this? Why would you steal my secret gear and give it give one to Issei to that Grammy pawn? yelled Azazel. Issei, you too? What are you doing? Bias yelled. I'm done taking orders from you, old man. I'm gonna get stronger, take him down, says Vali. As Naruto rolled his eyes, not another Sasuke wanted to get stronger to kill. Issei, why? Rias says with tears in her eyes. He say why, Rhea says with tears in her eyes. She might not like him, but she still considered him family. That's why she'd never kicked him out yet. You want to know why? I'll tell you why. Ever since that bastard came, you, 
you girls who are mine went for him. You take his side and everything. But then Vali came. He offered me the opportunity to get an harem. Now I'll kill Naruto, take you and take all the women I want. Your Piraj, his Piraj, Ryze's Piraj, Sazex's Piraj, every single Piraj, they will all be mine. The girls, every single girl will sh shall be mine. These is his mind. So you wish to fight the Nautuses as the red and white dragon emperor wings appeared. In a flash, Naruto was in front of Vali and Issei. Divide, divide, divide. Naruto saw them stumble to the ground. Both of you have committed a grave offence and shall die, Naruto says. Preparing a Rasengan big enough to disintegrate them both. Downfall dragon spear, Vali says as Azazel looked at him mad. Armour formed around Vali. Blue Vivan with Shenik sword, Issei yelled as he also used one of the so stolen sacred gears from Azazel as armour formed around him as well. That and being enhanced by an office snake will make us unbeatable, Vali said as they charged at Naruto who had no problem keeping up. Divide, boost, he wasn't even using Krama's power. Divide, boost was what was heard as Naruto fended them off. Oceanic drowning blast, Issei says as he sent a wave of water at Naruto who easily dodged it. What's that? Water dragon jutsu, Naruto says, wanting to humiliate Issei, but he was quickly having to dodge his own blast. My sacred gear. The Vivan Oceanair allows me to control water, serious and better than him. Become mine again, Issei yelled, madly getting distracted. Rasengan Naruto says, slamming through the dragon and slamming into Issei's chest, smashing his armor to pieces and shredding everything including his heart. Damn you, Naruto, I hate you, Issei yelled his final words as he died. Vali charged at Naruto as he made his a golden spear shoot a golden blast at Naruto. Naruto dodged it. Inferno style, black Inferno style, black dragon flames. Naruto says as a black dragon made out of black fire shot black flames into towards Vali, breaking his armor. Vali quickly made his twelve wings appear as he quickly teleported away before his body could be hit by the black fire. Suddenly, a monkey yokai appeared. What are you doing? You'll get killed, Naruto asked. Not knowing the monkey was part of the enemies. The monkey grabbed Vali. Naruto was about to attack but stopped. Wanting to know who he, he was. Who are you? Naruto asked. Wanting to get more information. We are the Chaos Brigade. We have the Dragon Affinity office with us. Attacking us will be the last mistake you make, he says. As he let out some flashbangs and disappeared. Unknown to Biku, Naruto placed some flying Rajin seals on him and Vali. Well that was good work Naruto, I'd expect nothing less from Rias' chosen one. I must thank you as well. Please have this sword, Michael says as he gave the Asquilum blade to Naruto who puts it into his sacred gear and due to his Uzumaki blood he gained immunity from Dragon Slayer magic or any type of Dragon Slayer abilities. Thanks for your help Naruto, Azaza said as, he, as Naruto nodded. His anger died down after seeing Issa and what he did. Naruto hugged Rias. She was devastated that her pawn did something like this. Naruto, why? Why? Why did this happen? I did everything I can for him. The one thing he wanted, I could not give him. Because I loved you, Rias cried into Naruto's shoulder. It's not your fault, Rias. It's that selfish fix, Naruto said. But guys, I'm going to end it off here. Naruto worked with Rias, Arkano, Zenobia, Azia, Grafia, Kroka and Nubaluna in his bed. Each having a part of his body in the arms, hugging it. Today, was the day the summer break began and they were going to go to the supernatural world. Every day, everybody had packed their things the night before. Naruto then felt a wiggle. He saw Rhea stretch cutely and rub her eyes when he looked towards where the wiggle was. Good morning, Naruto-kun, Rhea says as Rhea had gotten over the death of her pawn and how he treated her and betrayed her. Good morning, Rhea. Are you ready for the trip today? Naruto asked. Rhea nodded. Yeah, I am, Naruto. I can't wait for you to meet Milicus, Rhea says. Yeah, it'll be good to go. I can't wait to see this Milicus that you've been talking about a lot. And it'll be good to go without and relax without having to see the ugly scum Raizo or that pervert Issei, Naruto said as Rhea blushed, remembering how Naruto saved her and beat her ex stupid ex pawn. Eventually, everybody woke up and did their morning routines, and now we're on the train with Sona's Paraj who were also taking the Grimly train as that was the only train to the underworld. 
Azizo, Azizo had also joined the club as a teacher and had also joined uh, as the Pirages Sensei instructor. This was due to the fact the Chaos Brigade was getting dangerous and Azizo wanted to make sure that the people with the talent as he called it were fully trained and ready. Even though Naruto was sure Azizo was just being bored and didn't want to be the leader of the Fallen Indies anymore so he just pushed it onto Akuno's dad. The train suddenly came to a stop as a barrier erupted separating Naruto, Rias and Azizu and Naruto's Parage from the rest of Rias's Parage. So they were testing them and Naruto said already deducing what had happened. Yeah naruto -kun. I wasn't really for it but Brother and Azizu thought it would be good and the best way for them to learn the weaknesses and strengths of themselves and the team, Rio said. That and we could see how well they worked together as a team without Issei, Azizu said. Well without Issei, who normally tried to act like the alpha and take charge when he's just a beta, it should be easy for cooperation. Plus Zenobia is stronger than Issei, Naruto said, as Rias nodded. Azizu looked at them. It, Issei must have been really a bad guy if the Gremly Eris never cared for him, and normally the Gremlins cared for all of their pawns. They looked at the fight. Eventually, Akno and the rest of Piraj were overwhelmed. Naruto, his Piraj, Rias, Azazel then arrived at the scene. Rias' Piraj was defeated, but they managed to hold at least an hour and also managed to damage Tanim. Ah, Azazel, these new recruits are decent. They have good teamwork, however, they need to work on the individual strengths, Tanim said. I see, well, their weakness will be sorted out and we will sort our schedule for the training, Azazel replied. After that, the Pirage arrived at the Grammy house. Naruto was amazed at the sheer size of the house. Suddenly, a small red blur crashed into Rias. Naruto, sensing no ill intention, just watched and chuckled. Rias got off the ground giggling as she glared at Naruto and Akuno, who also chuckled. Romilicus, you come to say hi to your auntie? Rias said as the boy nodded. Eclair is seen coming to the site. My, my apologies, Rias Sama. I never expected him to act so bash, she said. It's okay, I missed him as well, Rias said. Oh yeah, Melikus, I want you to meet your uncle, Naruto Uzumaki. He's gonna be my fiancé. Well, he's gonna be my husband, he's my fiancé right now. Rhea says as she hugged Naruto. The boy perked up. However, Naruto struggled to stop coughing as he made it as she made it awkward when he said that when she said that. Ah, yes, I'm Naruto Uzumaki. Nice to meet you too, Melikus, Naruto said. Hi, I saw your fight against that mini riser and how you saved my auntie. It was so awesome. How did you make that meteor drop on him? Milika says as the two then started to speak. Rias just chuckled and followed them. Naruto then also met Rias' mom and dad again, where they talked about the young high class devils and the Pirages gathering. Both Naruto and Rias' Pirage will be going, as well as Rias and Naruto. However, they will first have to train. The schedule was sorted. Rias would train with her mom and her brother to master the power of disruption. Akuna would train with Azazel to master fallen angel powers, Chronicle with Kuroka to master her Neko abilities and Senjutsu. Zenobia, Ozzy and Kiba would train with Yubilina Grafia and Rius' dad. We now see Naruto entering the familiar forest. He sensed a huge power and went there. When he arrived he saw a huge dragon. Drake, Albion, is that you? How dare you to come here? After stealing my treasure. Oh, it's just a boy? What do you want boy? Leave or die, I'm the Chaos Karma Dragon Tiamat, one of the Dragon Kings, Tiamat said. Naruto remembered how Rias said that sometimes they needed to beat a familiar into submission to get it. I challenge you to fight. If I win, you become my familiar. If you win, I'll do whatever you want, Naruto says. Fine, if I win, you die, Tiamat said as she unleashed a mouth beam at Naruto, who deflects it away with just a slap of, it, a slap of his wrist against the beam. Surprising, Tiamat. How did you use your abilities without your secret gear? Wait a minute. You have chakra? Are you a yokai? Wait. How does the yokai possess his sacred gear? She asked. I'm a human, I'm special, I guess. I have chakra, Naruto says. Hmm, <laughs> it seems so. Too bad you wasted your life challenging me, she said as she rushed at Naruto, trying to claw him. As Naruto dodged claws after claws, but then he got tired as he kicked her, sending her flying back. Naruto then, sent, Naruto then sensed how she fired a mouth beam at him, which Naruto just ran through and punched her, making an explosion happen in her mouth. When she shut her mouth due to the force of the punch, Naruto then made hand signs. Five elemental style. Five dragon rule, Naruto says, as five dragons made up the basic ele elements 
tr elemental chakra natures opened their mouths and let out a beam of the respected element towards Tiamat and knocked her down. She tried to get up but fell back down. It seems you have won. Very well, I shall respect our deal and become your familiar. Tiamat says as they went to the Ash Kitchen lookalike and they completed the ritual. Both Tiamat and Nato arrived at the underworld and realized that they had that the rest of them had gone to the young devil's garden. Nato face palmed as he forgot that Rias was gonna be so mad. Tiamat, take me there, Nato says, jumping on Tiamat's back as she flew them there, not wanting to use his own wings and power. Nato had used the sun seal to heal Tiamat. When Nato arrived, he saw blood and dead gods. Nato instantly got in God, on God, as Nato and Tiamat blasted through the roof and saw Rias and the others fighting. Uh, but and losing to an unknown man. Loki, stop this madness, Odin says. I should not. Why should we, the Norse, ally ourselves with these weak, pathetic devils, angels, and fallen Jews? Those Chaos Brigades sound more like my type of people, causing trouble, not this peace loving factions, Loki said. Not to got mad. Timat sensing this, sent a blast at Loki, sending him flying away. Loki was distracted enough for Naruto to fire a wrestling shuriken, killing him completely. Naruto and Tiamat then landed. The Dragon King Tiamat, and who's this on her? Odin says. This is my brother-in-law, Naruto, Sazek said. I must thank you for putting an end to Loki's schemes. I'm sad that he had to die, but let's be honest, this was the best for Asgard. He wanted to destroy Asgard and fulfill Ragnarok, something I cannot allow, says Odin. It was my honor to help. I didn't want to kill him, but after hearing how he hated peace, this was the only way. Sometimes you have to do was hard for peace, Nato said. As Odin agreed, you seem pretty experienced for someone so young, Odin said. After that, period, after that the bridge headed back to the Gremory household. Everyone had gathered in the living room because Reese had requested it. You might be wondering why I've called you here. Well, it's to introduce to you a new member of our family. Please welcome Ross Weiss, a member of our new Piraj, of our Piraj, Rhea said, as everyone started to cheer. Well, since you've in introduced someone, it's only fair that I introduce someone as well. Meet my familia, the Chaos Karma Dragon Tiamat, Nart says as everybody cheers, as everybody cheers. Eventually, they had a party. Nart woke up with the girls on him, including Tiamat, who was in her female form. Their vacation was over. It was now time for them to go to home. They headed towards Kuro. Naruto also beat Rias' cousin, who challenged him to a fight. His name was Cyrog. He used the Sun Steel to heal Cyrog's mother, who was sick. Eventually, the squad arrived back at home at Kuro. A few months had passed by. Naruto was excited. Both Hishia and Kibajia were going to have a school trip to Kyoto. They were on a bus. Rias leaned her head on Naruto, making all of the male population on the bus get jealous. Hey blonde pretty boy, yeah you Uzumaki, how dare you get close to Rias, said a guy. Yeah, she should have a better person than you, like me, said another. No me, no, said another. Well, no, it's d definitely me, said another. As the whole male population started to argue, the female population decided to chime in. How dare you, Naruto Kun is handsome, Rias and Naruto are perfect. Yeah, although I wish it was me, not Rias. But she doesn't have someone good like Naruto, Kun, not a pervert like you, was what the female population was saying. Rias chan, perhaps we should ask your dad for a ORC club only bus, Naruto says, making the male population get mad. Naruto smirked. So did Krama, Drake, and Albion. <laughs> That's the nice one, partner. You got, you did it, kit, was what Drake, Albion, and Krama said. How dare you try to separate us from her? What, are you afraid? That we are much better than you? Afraid? Your pretty boy looks won't get get you far and won't be able to save you because your personality is bad. Respond loser was what uh, the Moyo population said as Nautis ignored them. Enough! I've had enough. How dare you? Stop insulting my Nautican. You're all losers and ugly. Maybe if you were good looking, maybe you'd get a girl. Obviously not me because I'm with Nautican. Maybe Nautican is right. We might need a private bus for the ORC. So you can all stop harassing me, Rias yelled. The males glared at Naruto, saying it was all his fault. As Naruto smirked at them, making them get angry. Just watch Uzumaki, watch yourself. Once we get off, once we're alone, you will pay. 
not to his mirth at them working with the challenge. The bus eventually arrived at Kyoto. Naruto and Rias had booked a room out in the Grammy Hotel privately along with the ORC. Graphia and Yubiluna were away in the underworld for some reason. It was to do with the meeting that Naruto could not attend because he had school so he sent his Priraj members instead. An incident happened where Kiba was surrounded by Yokai because their leader Yasuka was attacked and kidnapped. Naruto had come there when he saw a small Ninetales girl. Hey the little fox, Naruto said, challenging his, challenging his Ninetales shark and making a few ease. Yo yo yokai, a Ninetales like me, Kuna said. I'm a human but I have the Ninetales in me. Do you want to meet him, Naruto says, as Kuna nodded. Hey the kit, these people are good and are with my host. They never lied, nor did they take your mother. It must have been that terrorist group, the Chaos Brigade, Kurama says as Kuno nodded sadly. Hey the Kuno, we'll help you. After all, Gremlins and Yokai's are allies, Naruto says as Rias nodded. It will be an honour to help you, Rias said. Naruto went into sage mode where he sensed a person with high chakra levels, deducing that this was Yasuka. You're using Senjutsu, Kuno said as Naruto nodded. That's so cool, could you teach me as well? She said, not to pretend to think about it before agreeing. Why not, Naruto said, as Kuno pumped her hand up and yells yes. I'm going to be stronger than you, Kuno says, as Naruto walked up to her petting her head. Well, I better start training then. I don't want to be dethroned by you and left in the dust, Naruto said, joking as Kuno pouted. I will be stronger than you, even if you train, she says. Yes, and Akuno and the others smiled. Naruto was really good with the kids, as they imagined Naruto having their kids. And they smirked, before looking at each other and then glaring at each other. The group then made it to the bridge where Naruto encountered the hero fraction. Rius and Arkana fought a guy with beast maker sacred gear, a sacred gear that created beasts. Rius and Arkana used a combination of destruction and lightning magic to destroy to destroy everything in a 10 mile radius, destroying all of the beasts and then also beating the guy, knocking him out. Azia, Konako and Kiba, Ross Weiss and Zenobia fought Gene Ark. Konako defended Azia with Senjutsu while Azia healed Kiba and Zenobia strike at Jine in a swords, swordsman duel with swordswoman. Ross Weiss kept her close, unable to back off using her magic. Naruto was standing there. So, you are Naruto Uzumaki, a full human who has chakra and is engaged to a devil. Can't you see that they, they are using her to keep you loyal? Join us, the hero faction. We are a faction made of humans. You should be honored to join us said Kao Kao. Do not badmouth the Gremlins. They don't use their servants. Do not badmouth the Gremlins. They, they don't use their servants. They don't force them to do anything. They care for them, Naruto says. But really, I guess you're just a devil in human form then if you're accepting that humans should be slaves. I mean, you're engaged to one. But enough. You won't stop us from completing a goal, Kao Kao said as he summoned full his sacred gear, the true Longinus, a spear that could kill God. He threw it at Naruto, who put up his hand and then yelled Shinra Tensei as the spear goes flying away. Naruto then appears behind Kao Kao, punching him, sending him flying away. Naruto then appears behind Kao Kao once again, punching him and sending him flying down towards the floor before he grabbed his neck. You kidnapped the mother of a child for your own person again. You would hurt a family for your own selfishness. You would orphan a child just to fight. Great Red, how dare you, Naruto yelled, as he brang his fist down. Stop it. If you let him go, we will tell you where the nine toes Jessica is, said the voice. Tell me, Naruto says. The person told Naruto as Naruto threw Kao Kao at the person. The Chaos Brigade then all teleported away. Naruto was then reunited with Rias and her Pirage as they made it to where Yasuka was being held captive. Rasengan Naruto shouted, destroying the binds as Jessica fell on top of him. A few minutes later, Yasuka woke up to see she was in the arms of a man. When she looked up, she saw one of the most handsome persons alive. Who are you? She asked with a little, a little aggression. I'm Naruto Uzumaki and we saved you, Naruto says, as gesturing towards his team. Yasuka's eyes widened when she saw Rias. Ah, I see. I must thank you then for saving me, she says, as she looked at Naruto and she felt chakra. You have chakra? How? You're just a human, she asked, as Naruto told her he was special. My, my. Tell me, do you have a mate? Yasuka asked, as Naruto explained how he was engaged to Rias. 
that's a shame. But it would seem, but that's a shame. But it seems like you have a home. I wouldn't mind joining. Yes, like I said, making not to start. Her. Oh, but you do deserve a reward, she says, as Yasuka g walks up to Naruto and kisses him, making the girls get jealous. Naruto blushed. Wow, he said. How dare you? Naruto can his mind, Yas says, as she pulled Naruto in for a kiss. No, he's mine, Akuna says, as she kissed Naruto. No, he shall help me procreate and create babies. He's mine, Yasunobu said, as she kissed him. That's not fair, he's mine as well, as Azia said, as she kissed him. But guys, that's it for now. Don't forget, I'll probably pick this series up once season 5 is finished. So, see you later. Peace.